Okay, so this video is to help you find a sample standard deviation. That's what the STDEV is, standard deviation. And the sample standard deviation is represented by a lowercase s. And this is the formula to find it. Um, so this video is going to help you find the sample standard deviation using the formula rather than the calculator trick. I have another video to show the calculator trick if you want to use that. Um, but it'll go through how this formula works and it goes through it step by step. This notation here represents a summation. It's a sum. So it says take the sum of this. So in order of operations we would do in the parentheses first x minus x bar. x bar is a sample mean. Take each of these values, square it, then take the sum, divide by n minus 1. n is the number of data values in the data set, then take the square root. So I'm going to go through it with this example here. Um, first thing that we're going to do is find n. And in this case, um, n is the number of uh, data values. So I'm just going to count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there are 9 data values in this data set. So n is 9, which means that n minus 1 is 9 minus 1 or 8. So n minus 1, that's this part of the formula, is 8. So we found basically the denominator here already. The next thing we need to do is find x bar, which is the sample mean. So to find the sample mean, we're going to add up all the values. 100 plus 92 plus 73, blah, 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 all the way to the last value, 90, and divide by the number of values that we have, which in this case, again, is 9. Okay, I'm going to plug that in. So I'm going to do 100 plus 92 plus 73 plus 42, plus 57, plus 69, plus 81, plus 89, plus 90. And that is 693, that's my numerator. And I'm gonna divide that by nine. 693 divided by nine is actually 77. So I got a nice number. If this were a decimal, I might round it to the nearest 10th, which is you know, one value to the right of the decimal place. Um, depending on you know what you want to do, depending on how you want to round. Usually we take one more digit than is in or represented in the data set. So these are all whole numbers, so I would go to the tenth place if this were a decimal that I needed to round. So now I found this value within this formula. Now what I like to do to simplify this is create a, um, um, a table. So I'm going to create a table with all the values which is represented by x. So x in this formula represents each of the data values. So because I have nine data values, that means I have nine x's. This is a variable. So 192, so I'm going to make myself a table. 192 with all of my x's. 73, 42, 73, 42, 57, 69, 57, 69, all of them. 81, 89, 90. 81. 89 and 90. This is going to make my formula a little bit easier. Then remember I said we're going to do in the parentheses first. So each one of these data values minus the mean, minus the mean which is 77. So x minus x bar is going to be this column. So I'm going to extend this table step by step to represent this portion of my, um, my sample standard deviation formula. So now I have to take each of these minus x bar which was 77. So 100 minus 77. 92 minus 77, 73 minus 77, 42 minus 77, 57 <laughs> minus 77, all the way down to the bottom. That is what this portion of the formula is telling you to do. And that's what it's about, you know, understanding what the formula is telling you. Um, once you understand that, it, you can do any situation. Okay, so we have 23, 15, negative 4, 42, uh, sorry, 42 minus 77, negative 35, uh, negative 20, negative 8, 4, And last but not least, 13. Okay, so, all right, this is um, all these data values minus the mean. And I have to do them separately. Okay, again, that's this portion of my formula. That's this portion. Now, I'm not ready to take the sum, which is what this um, 
variable tells me to do. I have to first square each of these situations. So that portion of my formula, I'm going to extend this table into another column, taking each of these values that I just found and squaring them. So now I'm going to take 23 and square it. I'm going to take 15 and square it. That's going to make all of these positive because even a negative value squared is going to make it positive. So 23 squared is 529. 15 squared is 225. I'm just going to continue. This is 16, 35 squared, 1225, 20 squared should be 400. Mm -hmm. This is 64, 16, 144, 169. So now again, I'm creating this table to make this formula a little bit easier to do. I have to do each of these values, by, you know, minus the mean, then square them. So the table helps uh, organize that a little bit. So I took each of my data values, I subtracted each of them, um, minus the mean, which we found initially, right? And then I took each of these numbers that I got, and now I'm squaring each of them. That represents this portion of the formula, x minus x bar squared. Now this portion tells me to take the sum of that column. So now if I take the sum of that column, let's add up this column. If I add up this column here, that represents the sum of what this column is, which is each value minus the mean squared. So let's add that up, 529 plus 225 plus 16 plus 1225 plus 400 plus 64, plus 16, add them all up, I got 2788, 2788. Okay, now I'm going to rewrite this formula um, for a sample standard deviation here. Again, it is small s for sample standard deviation is the sum of each value minus the mean squared over n minus 1, where n is the number of values, and then square root that. So what did we determine? Well, we said beginning in the beginning that we have nine data values. N is nine. So N minus one would be eight. And that's the denominator of this fraction. So we have the denominator of this fraction, eight. Then we said um, the numerator represents the sum of each value minus the mean squared. And that represents this column from our table, the sum of each value minus the mean squared, 2788. So that's the numerator of that fraction, and then I just have to take the square root of that. So I'm almost done finding my sample mean. Now this is a squiggly equal sign, it means approximately, so if it's not exactly a number, then we say squiggly equal sign. It's an approximation. Um, don't forget to take the square root after you divide. So the square root of 2788, 2788 divided by 8. If you're doing that in your calculator, make sure you put parentheses around the division. Do the division first, then take the square root. I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, so 18.7. So my calculator told me um, 18.6682. So when I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, that's this position. If the number to the right of that is 5 or greater, this number goes up. To seven and now I have my sample standard deviation rounded to the nearest tenth. I chose the nearest tenth because my original set of data had just you know um, whole numbers and I usually go one more value, one more digit to the right of um, to the right of the decimal or one more digit um, more than what is represented in my uh, data set. So again each of the values minus the mean, square that, then take the sum, then divide by n minus one and then take the square root. So if you need to, you can go over this video as many times as you want to go through that formula. Again, a lot of students, you know, they make it look a little bit worse than it is. It looks worse than it is. It's not hard. It's just cumbersome, meaning it's long, it's tedious. And um, if you have a graphing calculator, I'm going to send you guys this video. Or, you, you know, I have another video so you can see how to go through it using the graphing calculator, which makes it much quicker and much easier. Um, you can also use Excel. You know, there are other statistic uh, programs that you can use, but... Um, this one is going through the formula, and then I will send you one using a graphing calculator, specifically a TI-8384. So good luck, guys.